Mike, congratulations, man. One heck of a Octagon debut. Talk about just your, your initial thoughts after a performance like that and, and, and getting a big knockout win in your Octagon debut. Thank you, Mike. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I've envisioned stoppages for this, for this fight and, you know, uh, even, let's, let's take it back even before this. This is, the UFC debut is something I've been looking forward to since I was a little kid. I remember, you know, being 13 years old in high school in ninth grade, being just barely five feet tall, like 94 pounds like the smallest kid in my grade, you know, I was an athletic kid, but I started not being able to keep up with, with other kids that are like, you know, four, you know, I'm 13, 14. I, I was the, the small kid and I got that classic small man syndrome and I was like, one day I'm going to be big and I'm going to be able to fight and no one's going to be able to this or that. And it's like, <laughs> and, uh, and now just like, it, 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 this sport just like completely changed my life. It took, it took anger away from me. It gave me focus. It gave me drive. It gave me <laughs> I almost started just reciting the rock song. Like, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> this this sport changed my life, and I'm so grateful for it. Like, I was that kid who I had strict parents that I wasn't allowed to watch UFC in the house when I was a kid. So like, where other like. 13, 14, 15 year old kids are hiding like Playboys under their mattress. I was hiding UFC DVDs that I bought from Blockbuster, like waiting till my parents went to bed so I could watch them at night. And like the amount of times I watched UFC 53 is like probably in the hundreds, just like studying fighters and finding what I could before the internet and just like absolutely loving the sport. To, so to go from like a kid who's obsessed with this sport as a fan and so desperately wanted to be accepted by this community to just now be able to fight in the UFC and perform on the biggest stage in the world on a pay-per-view with like seemingly sold out crowd it was it was packed in there is just an absolute dream come true i i i i knew it would feel something like this but i the the feeling the the the, the way it feels is is just unbelievable yeah Sorry, I, I could go on for an hour, but I know we got some stuff to do. Oh, no, I mean, that's it's pretty cool. And, and I could tell you were sort of a student of the game because the post-fight reaction, it was, uh, and I don't know if you planned this or I don't know if this is what you meant by this, it was very BJ Penn-esque, if you will, because you kind of saw yourself <laughs> on the screen and yeah. it was a little bit of BJ. And can you, can you talk about that and, and just what you noticed when you saw yourself on the screen after you knocked him out? I felt the blood trickle down the back of my throat. I felt it drip down my face and spray as I exhaled and there's part of me that's like you shouldn't be getting hit like this and there's part of me that's like let's fucking go I'm bleeding in a fist fight in Florida let's go baby this is fucking sick um <clears throat> so yeah when I when I got out and, and won that's not that's not normally my style but I just saw the blood on my face and I'm like look man normally I like to keep it technical normally I like to keep it crisp but there's a dog in me too. Like I'll I'll out technique you. I'll I'll take you down. I'll say I'm a black belt in jiu-jitsu. I'm a high level kickboxer. But if it comes down to tucking the chin, biting on the mouth guard, and swinging hooks in the pocket, like let's fucking do it. It seemed like Mickey's footwork was really good. It seemed like his striking just continues to evolve. And and you got hit a few times, but then you just kind of had that mentality where it's like, all right, I'm gonna start just slinging back as hard as I can. And then you land that left hand, and he just drops. I just want to live vicariously through you for a moment. What is that like? Like when you landed that left hand and he went down like that? I mean, you had to know that it was over, but what's what's going through your mind after that punch lands? I mean, I thought it was probably over, but at the same time, he's a tough guy. He's a veteran. No one's ever knocked him out before. You know, he's been rocked and he's found ways to fight back and he's dangerous off his back. He's dangerous on the ground. He fucking took me down with that body lock. I know my, my wrestling coaches aren't going to be super thrilled with that one, but I got back to my feet and found a way to continue to fight. Um, it's a, the, when you land a, a knockout punch, it's, it's a weird feeling. Like, it doesn't feel the way you'd think it feels. Like, it doesn't feel like hitting a bag. It feels like more like breaking a board than, than hitting a bag in that you go right through something. And it, it almost like there's something really satisfying about hitting a bag where you bounces back and you're like, ooh, I smoked that. It doesn't feel like that when you land that knockout shot. It just, like the head follows through and you're like, oh shit, where'd he go? And you're like, oh my God, he's on his way down. Like, okay, you know, stay calm. It might not be over. Hopefully it is. Hopefully we get that finish. Hopefully we get that stoppage. But if not, we're going to stay calm and, uh, and we're going to find a way to continue to win. 
And last thing, you said after the fight that you were going to donate half your purse to Joey Rodriguez's daughter to, to support her in her battle against cancer. H how much does this all mean to you for that? Because, you know, wins and losses and fighting and, and sports, those things are certainly important. But things like this, what you're doing, it, it sort of just makes you look at things in a, in a much different light, does it not? I mean, I love this sport. It's definitely an, a huge, important part of my life. I pour so much into it, but, like, I'm so blessed to have health. I'm so blessed to have a healthy family. Um, my little sister had uh, Guillain-Barr syndrome when she was 18, and for her 19th birthday, I got a call on my 21st birthday, and I thought my parents were calling to tell me happy birthday, and they're like, hey, kid, we need you to sit down. Your sister's in the hospital. She's on a breathing tube. She's on a feeding tube. We don't know what it is yet. She couldn't move for a month. She had to learn how to walk again. She had to learn how to write again. She had to learn how to do everything again. And uh, going into a hospital room and seeing my... It'd be nice to be able to get on TV and not cry one time. That'd be pretty cool. Um, seeing my 18-year-old at the time sister with a mouth full of breathing and feeding tubes and <laughs> they're not being able to move and uh, man that 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 hit really hard and sobered me up and made you realize like how how short and delicate life really is so to hear that someone that I love my boxing coach Joey Rodriguez someone I've known for eight years and seven, eight years and has helped me get to this point and cornered me for my last fight and has given me direction and opportunity and love to find out that he and his family have to go through this with a beautiful 15 year old daughter. It's, it's heartbreaking. So I'm like, look, man, you know what? I mean, fuck, I could use the money, but they could use a hell of a lot more than I could. I've, I've, I've been grinding for, for, years to get to this point i've been grinding since i was you know to get to 30 and get to the ufc what's a little bit more like they need this money i, I, I want to make sure they get the best doctors and the best medicine money can buy and they kick this thing's ass and it's 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 nothing for their family and i want to quickly say thank you so much to the the fans of this sport that as i'm walking out of the cage handed me I don't know how much money, probably th thousands of dollars, a lot of cash to donate to this, to, to their fight against cancer. You have no idea how much it means to, to me, to our team, I'm sure to the Rodriguez family. Um, it's, it's, this is a violent sport. This is a cutthroat sport. This is a brutal sport. And, and you can't give an inch, but, but once that fight's over, we're we're a passionate we're a caring community we we help one another we we do things for one another so so to have people take cash out of their pockets when they're supposed to be having fun when they're supposed to be you know enjoying their night they've already spent thousands of dollars to be here to give me a fistful of cash the the, the 10 people that did fuck that it's it's so it's such an incredible feeling thank you guys anything else Thank you, guys.